Okay, so we've took charge of Inter. These first few bits of news are just a kind of an overview of what's going on. This one's definitely worth looking at is there will be different rules, which I'm going to go over in a second, um, in each league, um, particularly when it comes to transfers and squad registration, things like that. It's key that you know what's going on, otherwise you could end up <clears throat> messing it up, loan transfers or something else that you need to look at as well. And again, this is the responsibilities part as well. So we'll go over that in a second. So the first thing you have to do is basically have a meeting where well, you can skip it if you really want to, but I would always recommend attending the meeting. So you attend, um, they basically introduce you to the club. So there's only one option on this. So then they talk about the history. So if you want to just basically, it just brings up a news article. So I'm just going to say, yeah, I'd love to learn more about the club. Um, the next is the philosophies. So you can basically, if I do, um, yeah, let's say that I want to do some philosophies. I usually don't because if you haven't got anything that they're judging you on, you're probably likely to get away with a little bit more. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to click this. Um, do you want a press conference? I always do a press conference. You might as well, but it's not the end of the world if you don't want to. So we'll say yes on that one. And then that's pretty much it for this one. So I'd always say this and basically it will pass you on to the assistant manager straight away. He'll ask you a couple more questions. This usually, so it's asking if, if I want to see a report, which I always want to know because I want to have a look and see what the current players are and what Orlando Trustful thinks of the players. But the, usually what will happen is the first question will be an intra-squad friendly. So basically you'll play against your reserves. Now, I don't like playing those because I don't like an extra friendly just for the sake of playing one. But if you were kind of undecided or if you just wanted to just put out an 11 just to see how you get on, then you could t say yes to that. But in terms of the report, yes, please, I would like to have that. Would I like to re meet my backroom staff? Yes, I would. And then you can use these again for the staff responsibilities to change them directly from here. But I usually just say thanks for your help. I know where to find you because there's no need to do it yet. OK, so here's the thing that comes from the history. You've basically got just an overview of what they've won, so the trophies, what the youth facilities and training facilities are like, who the rivals are, a couple of extra details here, and obviously it gives you kind of a breakdown in terms of like a worded one at the top. This is the report that he's given me, which basically, th this has actually got a little bit better over the years. They've, they've extended it a little bit more, so it kind of breaks it down into a lot more categories now. Um, and then you can click team report in the bottom right, which will give you sort of like a more rounded one of these. And you can go into squad depth over here and see what positions you've got and things like that. And you can change the formation at the top. Um, you can do like different roles and what a best 11 would be based upon the formation you're in if he was to pick it. So that might be quite interesting. Obviously, I'm not too bothered about that. I, I kind of know what the inter team is like, so I don't really need to look at it too much. You've then got these, this has been a new thing on this this year's game as well, is that they'll give you advice as the season goes and you can basically click apply over here and it'll do whatever you've they've, they've suggested to do. So um, transfer policy, use some use the use facilities because we've got good youth facilities, corner takers, defenders to scout, suitable free kick takers, suitable penalty takers, but I don't really look at any of this at the beginning to be honest. I like to set it up myself anyway. And then you've basically got a scout report, which will tell you the current list of players that the scouts have recommended. So if you click onto the reports, they'll basically give you a sort of like a breakdown of the players. So one thing that you could do on here is go to scout main details from here. And that will then give you the ability and potential ability because this recommended over here isn't actually necessarily true. And it's not, if I filter by that, probably going to prove me wrong now but it has done but sometimes what will happen is that the recommended ability might be higher for some players but it's because their potential is better but say they might be only a half a star rating now on ability you might not want to look for those players so if you select like actual ability to begin with it will sort it by what they're currently like and obviously if you are looking for someone with good potential you can sort by potential ability here and then over here they'll give you sort of like a range of what they think you need to pay for them <clears throat> so it's definitely something worth looking at and obviously when it comes to the actual scout when you do yourself this will be a lot more um a lot more interesting and obviously as as the scouts go on out on scouting missions um they'll come back with these type of reports and it's just worth doing scout main details over here 
because I found that sometimes it can get a little bit jigged up, especially with this recommended over here. It's not necessarily true. Okay, so we've basically come to this point where we now can go through any of the things above here. So the first thing that I would do is at the top, you can click Serie A and it will take you to the league. And if you then go to overview, you can then go to rules and that will give you a breakdown of everything that the league requires you to adhere to. So there's a lot of stuff on here, but it's pretty basic, most of it. One thing you do need to look out for, though, is the match rules. So you can have free transfers anytime. It's quite similar to the Premiership, that players registered for the competition. And then the number of subs, which in Italy is 12, which is quite nice, to be honest. But you can still only use three of them. Trialists, no trialists. And then you've got squad registration, which is probably the most key part of this, this screen. So... It's, this is the same as it is in England, if you've done a save in England before. You can have a number of players that have basically trained at the club. It's the, basically the homegrown players. So you're going to need those. However, if you... I think this is... A, so you've got 25 players. Say I only had five players who've been trained in the same nation for three years. Or say I, only, say I didn't have any players that are trained at Inter for three years before the, they were 21. Obviously, I would need four, but what you can do is you can have a squad size of 21, which means there's four spaces, and that will basically allow you to go through because the four spaces will remove the need to have four minimum players. So you don't need to fill these out, but you will need to take the hit on your squad size. I think Man City actually did that at one point, and it was in the news at some point. I think it was last season or something like that, that they only had a squad size of something like 22 or 23 players because they couldn't fill the quota for this type of thing. You've got the, the transfer windows um, and then a couple of extra bits here on the outside. Which there might be a couple of extra things for the league that you've started in. Yeah, it's just worth looking out for. This squad registration is probably the key part of this screen. You've then got league sorting rules. So that's a little bit different in this league, which is that the results between the teams decide. So even if you've got a better goal difference, if the overall aggregate score between you and a team that's on the same amount of points as you if you're losing that aggregate result then they will still finish higher than you away goals do count in this that i've noticed i've not been in a league yet that away goals when this has been the case that away goals hasn't hasn't affected it you've then got how much you get for winning the league which are usually really small because obviously like inter you'd expect them to get more than like 3.8 million but obviously the money comes from elsewhere tv revenue and different things like that You've then got the relegation, so the number of teams that will be relegated, and then the continental qualification, so how many teams get into Europe, and then there's a bit more of an extended thing this year on disciplinary rules, so it might just be worth having a look at that. Um, another breakdown of the transfer windows, and then the transfer rules, which Italy is actually quite a good one to do on this video because it's quite detailed which goes in relation to non-EU players. So in Italy, what they do is basically you can only... Let me just make sure I'm getting this right. Yeah, you can only sign two non-EU players. And ah, let me try and think of another league that I can go to that will have... I think France might have... So if you click on League One, go to Rules... Yeah, so Italy doesn't have this, but France does have this, which is nations treated as EU. So obviously the EU is Europe, but France actually include some other nations, which are pretty much everything in Africa, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, that's how you say it, Continu nations. I'm not too sure what that is, to be perfectly honest with you, but oh, here we go. So it's like, um, yeah bit more like Africa, a little bit further out probably. Oceania nations. And if you click on each of these, it'll basically give you a breakdown of the of the nations. If you click onto here, it'll give you the nations that you've got there. So um just because it says EU doesn't necessarily mean that they are they have to be in Europe. One thing that I did notice though is that Russia, Ukraine, even though they are in the EU, they don't count as e uh, it's EU players which is a little bit annoying, to be honest, especially when you go to try and buy like a Yarmolenko or something like that. Um, and as you can see from up here, it's got a maximum of four non-EU players, and that's in France. So yeah, so again, just worth looking out for those two. 
Um, if we go back to Italy, yeah, you can only sign two. And that basically depends on how many you already have in your team. And then the only way you can free up spaces is by basically getting rid of a player that season. So if you sold like an Argentinian player, you could then buy another one in, but you can still only get a maximum of two. If you've already got them in there, then it will restrict you um, at the start. So you might not be able to buy any, any further non-EU players. So yeah, that's just something to look out for. It's the transfer rules. These will differ. Um, that and this will differ in every single league. So the first thing that I would do is just have a look, unless obviously you've played in the league before or you, you might be from Italy and you play in the, you know how the Serie A works. So yeah, it's definitely something to look out for. So after that, what I will usually do is go to my squad. So as you can see at the moment, it's in a bit of a weird order. So this screen up here, this uh, menu, sorry, from up here, Basically, you can select different types of things. So the first one is like a general info, which I'll go to and then sort by position, just so it's nicely ordered. So you can sort of go through and look at your goalkeepers and your defenders and your midfielders, strikers. Um, when it comes to actually playing matches, so when you're in the middle of the season, I'll click on selection info, which will give you the condition sharpness, which is basically their match sharpness, um, which does play a big part in how well they'll perform. It'll give you how many games they've played, the goals, assists, and that average rating. Obviously, they'll give you the morale as well. And then the other one, main one that I use is contract. Now, you can basically look by squad status if you really wanted to do that. However, wage is probably the key one that you want because obviously you might want to get rid of someone who's on some high wage. Not that I recommend getting rid of Icardi, but he's on 110 grand a week. So you can just sort it by that if you need to free some wage. Well, like Jovetic there, he's on loan, so you could probably get you can get rid of him straight away if you wanted to by right clicking on him and terminating his loan, and that would free up eighty seven grand straight away. And then obviously you've got value as well. So if you were trying to sell, say Banniger, he's just joined, but you could get rid of him, and that's how much he's worth at the moment. So yeah, those between those three you should be fine. And I'll just usually just click down, have a little look, and. So this guy's quite a good example. He's already transfer listed anyway. He's definitely not good enough to play for Inter in goal. So from this screen, I will go to offer to clubs and he's only worth 70 grand anyway. So I'll probably just give him away for free. If you wanted to, you could basically sign for like 60 grand if you wanted. If you were just like with that Banniger one before, you might want to offer him out for say like 15 million when he's worth 22. Because if you're going to transfer list them, which is this part down here, which says transfer list and set players are not needed, they usually won't pay as much as his valuation. But you might want to try 20 million at first. And if no one wants him, then just keep dropping it and dropping it and dropping it until someone puts a bid in for him. So, yeah, so transfer offer, I'm going to offer him for free. Transfer list and set is not needed. And I've offered him to clubs, which will basically mean that that Palmer should come back to me with an offer now, to be honest. And then if I go to transfer up here, You've basically got the squad status, so that's what the not needed means, is it'll change that to not needed straight away for you, so that more of the AI teams respond to him. If you've got a player that's a key player or first team, usually they won't go after them unless they really want them. If they're on rotation, backup or not needed, then they will bid for them, but they probably won't pay quite as much as the value. You'd be, you'd be lucky to get the value for them if you put them as one of those three. Maybe if it was rotation, they might pay a little bit more. Um, but if you want to keep a player and he's, and he's important to you, I definitely recommend putting him as one of these two. So I just scan down the team, have a look at who I want, who I don't want, offer them out to clubs straight away if I don't want them. Um, this is another guy. I did, did have, I actually done another inter save, so I'd, have, I'd offer him out. He's obviously Argentinian, so he's a non-EU player, as you can see from down here. So I just get rid of him, to be honest. Eccentricity 16, which is a little bit dodgy. 